stock earnings and statistical modeling. I thought that we might take a look at the upcoming NVIDIA earnings as an example of how you know you might use math theory and stat modeling to go into a stock earnings trade uh, and and potentially you know angle your portfolio around it um, and i mean with that being said nvidia i think is a good example of one that can potentially you know touch a lot of portfolios it's a top five stock in the s p now um garners about three percent of that index uh, and a lot of you know that status that it's accumulated comes from the fact that it's up 200 percent on the year and it's had two earning cycles so far both overwhelmingly positive uh, and off of those earnings um have seen significant upside that day and then continued upside to follow the earnings third earnings of the year uh coming on august 23rd and and so this begs a lot of different questions um how do i position myself uh, is this market due for a fall is it uh is it just going to continue higher here um and this is where you start to bring in the math theory and the stat modeling around these because um, it, it, it might be um, it might not sound interesting or be the answer that you want to hear. But at the end of the day, a binary event like an earnings move or um, you know any kind of data release that comes out and whether it's going to be bearish or bullish for the stock market at large um it has a theoretical 50 50 proposition to it and and the market is more or less memoryless um nvidia earnings this week doesn't necessarily know what nvidia earnings did last cycle or the last two cycles or the last 10 cycles um and, and so if you are trying to create it it's similar with um you know watching an nba player shoot free throws and then you know he's made two free throws in a row so does that mean he's hot or does that mean he's due for a miss here um well his average percentage of shooting free throws if it's 80 percent then and he's made the last two what are the odds of him making this free throw it's 80 percent, my friends um and so what does that mean for nvidia or any spe specific single stock well maybe it's not 50 50 uh the theory around it maybe isn't if you look at historical action because here's uh what a lot of um statistical models and uh math uh people who bring math theory into practice will look at which is you know the law of large numbers and and looking at a handful of earnings occurrences averaging them out and then essentially saying okay if i trade the next several earnings then I should maybe position myself towards what the historical average has been. And by the law of large numbers, over you know 10 earning cycles, 20 earning cycles, 30 earning cycles, um, the results will tend to move towards that historical average as the number of occurrences goes to infinity. Now, again, this is all theory here. There's, there's no guarantee. And uh, obviously, NVIDIA has had and we'll get to the numbers here in a second has had overwhelmingly positive earnings over the last several years because the stock is up huge over the last several years similar to apple or uh what have you and the technology boom that we've seen can easily turn uh to a technology bust so this is of course risk involved and this is all theory um but with that disclaimer in mind, let me explain the theory a, a little bit more. Um, so you have here, all of those X's are essentially, you know, the first earning cycle, the second earning cycle, the third, all the way on into N different earnings um, that, you know, you have traded in your portfolio here. And as you accumulate all of those, you know, oh, if I play every single one of them to the upside, for example, uh, in NVIDIA, 
um, and I average all of those out. Oh, the first one was up. The second one was up. The third one was down. The fourth one, and so on. If I average those out, um, that average will tend to the historical uh, uh, average there as the number of occurrences goes to infinity. And that's you know that you hear on the Tasty Live program all the time uh, how important number of occurrences is is because it, it's part of math theory it's part of um anything uh that has to do with uh numbers and and uh and, and uh, modeling and everything else which is if you have a, a profitable strategy you have a strategy you think is going to work well if you do it once you could lose if you do it once you could win um but your if you you start to do it five times ten times a hundred times you should by the law of large numbers get close to what the expect expectation was uh, as that number grows higher and higher um and and with that in mind the average move after earnings in nvidia for the last three years has been plus six percent which shouldn't be a surprise over that same time frame this is a market that's gone from about a hundred dollar stock to a 450 dollars stock it'd be very weird if the average move was negative um, again this historical aspect isn't necessarily an indication of what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to happen the next earning cycle uh, but this is the historical average and by this theory um, if that historical average does hold as the long-term expectation for the future, um, then, you know, the next N number of earnings uh, occurrences here should average out to that expectation. Of course, again, historical average isn't necessarily uh, the expectation or the, the, the future fact of what NVIDIA is going to do. Now, here's where things get really interesting. The market is so efficient that, you know, how much of the recent move is traders digesting this information and getting ahead of it? Uh, I, I don't know if it's any coincidence that NVIDIA is up more than 10% in the last two weeks here and is again teetering on all-time highs. Um, is the market getting ahead of this information? Is it priced in? That's kind of for you to determine, uh, and that's what makes this this whole thing so interesting uh, all the time. Is is you know by the regulations and and uh, you know insider trading laws and everything else, all the information that is moving Nvidia is public information. The the average that I just told you about of you know plus six percent over the course of the last three years worth of earnings, everybody has those numbers. Um, and, and so is the market getting ahead of this a little bit? Maybe I tend to be on the side of, you know, develop your strategy, develop your modeling uh, that you want to to go with, and don't get inside your own head. Um, don't, because uh, if, if you do and you start to think about, okay, well, my strategy is all built on uh, public information that everybody has, then you take that all the way to uh, the end of that spectrum there and everything's priced in all the time and there's no reason to buy a, a stock or, or do anything ever because everything's efficiently priced. Um, and so that can be really kind of debilitating in a way. Uh, so is it getting ahead of this information? I tend to think uh, no here um, because also, yeah, doubled the average move and there's stuff that's going on in the market. Semiconductors as a whole have been moving back and forth a lot recently. Uh, so it's something to be aware of. Maybe if we're coming off a 12% two week span for NVIDIA and you're expecting another, you know, that full 6% average or more, maybe, maybe you don't have that full expectation um if that is your strategy uh but I, I again i think you develop your strategy and you just do what is consistently uh 
you you implement that strategy consistently that is to say without letting any outside force kind of shake you one time or two times uh, out of your 10 occurrences let's say uh here try to you know replicate that strategy as consistently as possible um and looking at the options market here, because uh, also there's a ton of different ways to take this information, right? Um, it's absolutely no recommendation by me to necessarily buy NVIDIA stock and, and just like, uh, oh, I'm going to get 6% every earnings cycle. Um, it's just information that can factor into your strategy. And like I say, it can turn on a dime. Uh, but it is interesting as well for the options traders out there to look at that historical average move of around 6% and see the implied move from the options being closer to 12%. Um, and uh, it, the one standard deviation move, uh, which is about 12% of a $450 stock is $50 uh, by Friday using the weekly options. Um, so a lot of information here about NVIDIA today, but hopefully getting the gears turning on earnings in general and how uh, statistical models tend to take a look at historical moves, take a look at implied moves, and then try to keep a, a, a consistent strategy there. Um, because yeah, I mean, it could be everything from, okay, well, I have a bunch of S&P 500. And so when there is a stock like NVIDIA, that's a top 10 stock in the S&P um, that has uh, an earnings coming up, I like to look at that average um, and then see if the implied move is bigger than that average, I will hedge, you know, part of that uh, at the implied move, essentially selling, you know, a call. Um, or I have no holdings in the S&P 500, and I'm going to use this uh, average move and the implied move around it and just position a strangle that is centered around the average move, but has, you know, legs on both sides. Uh, or I'm a complete contrarian. I'm going against the historical average move and I'm going to sell NVIDIA a ton of different ways to take it here. Um, but just a little taste of how statistical modeling uh, tends to look at these uh earnings moves that uh, can be very interesting and will be interesting here for NVIDIA stock. One of the few stocks at all time highs here uh, that's been bouncing back and forth and has a pretty large implied move north of 10%.